Hello everyone and welcome to the OP Labs workshop, launching an OP stack chain in 30 minutes or I shave my head live on camera. Joining us today is Kelvin uh, Victor, who will be taking us through this session. And with that, I will pass it over to Kelvin to get the session started. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm sitting on the floor right now, which is very bad, my back, but what can you do? So such is life when you don't have a desk. Uh, this is about uh, uh, running an OP stack scene in 30 minutes where I'd shave my headline on camera. Unfortunately, I don't have a razor with me, so if I can't make it in 30 minutes, I'll have to do the, the, the shaming at another time, but I will do it live on camera. So I'm going to start a stopwatch. Oh God. Okay. Let's go. So essentially what I'm doing is I went to stack.optimism.io and then, sorry, I didn't forgot to introduce myself. I'm Kelvin. I work uh, for OP labs doing a lot of different things, but today I'll be running over the process of running an OP stack chain, which is really, really easy now. So essentially what we're going to do is launch our own roll up in 30 minutes, be super, super easy, and then later on go and modify it. Um, if you go to the OpenStack docs, so stack.optimism.io and scroll down to building OP stack rollups and go to the getting started. You can follow along, but I'm basically just going to follow this tutorial and show you what I'm doing. Uh, so let's get a move on. I've opened up a new folder called demo for the sake of this, and I'm just going to start running tutorial. So first thing we do is watch the, oops, watch, or did I clone the Optimism Modern repo? So that's where a lot of the code lives. Pretty much everything except for Geft lives in the Optimism Modern repo. And then we're just going to go at edit and install dependencies. And then we're going to build a whole bunch of packages. Um, installing dependencies and building packages takes a little bit of time. So once we start building the packages, we can go ahead and move on to cloning and building OP get, uh, which is the execution client, the default execution client for the open stack. So if you are familiar with the architecture of, uh, the Ethereum node ecosystem these days. There are two components. There's a consensus client and an execution client. And the open stack, the optimism, and all the rollups like base that are based on the OP stack also use the same split. So we will be running both of those components as part of this tutorial. First thing first, I'm going to start building the optimism monitoring boat. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and long one that yes. And building open get at the same time. So yeah, like I was saying, there's there's two components, uh, the consensus client and the execution client. The execution client is called OP get. It's at the very minimal dip on the top of uh, upstream get, represented right now. It's a single commit. Here you go. I'm just building get. This is how you would build get if you were building normal get. You just run get. And uh, this is usually pretty fast. So um, this is just going to take a second. And then once that's done, we're going to go back to the mono repo. So we're back to the mono repo. It's still building a whole bunch of things, uh, building a whole bunch of different components. But again, the most important thing that we're going to build is this thing called the BOP node, which is our consensus client. So if that means I'm going to get out and look ahead of what we're going to do, we're going to generate some private keys. So as part of this tutorial, uh, there are four key actors in the system that we want to generate keys for. There's an admin account, which is the ability to upgrade contract within the system, a bachelor account, which publishes the sequencer to back data and the sequencer to back data publishes it to our L1. Uh, there is the proposer account, which publishes transaction results to the L1. And the sequencer account, which is going to sign blocks on the L2, so that if we wanted to run more than one node, we could run that and we will connect over a peer to peer network and distribute blocks uh, quickly over the peer to peer network. So the first thing that we're going to do in a second, once this builds, is we're going to create a whole bunch of these keys using the read key command. Um, because I'm going to keep these keys private, I'm just going to go over to uh, my other window here and where are we? Here we are. And in a window that you can't see, I'm going to run this command. So all this is going to do is, whoops, 
It's going to do exactly what you can see on the screen. It's going to generate these keys, and it's also going to generate a mnemonic. Oh, my. It's sort of beeping. Okay. Um, so give that a second to finish building. If I can't make it in 30 minutes, I blame, I blame Gurley. I almost learned my lesson and, and didn't do this on Gurley this time, but then I got lazy and I decided to do it on Gurley again. So my guess is that the most annoying thing will be deploying the smart contracts to Gurley, but we'll find out. So, you moved to set our and almost on building. Run on. Either that or the build process. Let me, okay, good. We're done. So in another terminal that you can't see, probably again, oops, I'm going to run the npx part at the key command. Uh, in terms of custom and tabs, we have added, and it's just going to generate these keys. So if you can't see this, I can see this, but I, I now have an output that looks like this. And in a minute, I'm going to fund some of these keys with some. Now I'm going to move for a reason. I'm going to go and configure the network. So right now, network configuration happens inside of the contracts bedrock package. So there's this folder called deploy config inside of packages contracts bedrock. One config within the optimism of modern program. And there's this network called getting started that is sort of set up for you to fill in so that you can go and, and run your own chain. So it's got these things that you need to fill in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this command down here that will keep giving me some information about a recently finalized Gurley block, which I can then use to, uh, to set the starting block for my rollup. So the rollup can start at any point where we hash a number. It start at any point, it starts syncing from any point. But we really just want to find some block that we can use as our starting point. So I'm just using the latest finalized block on Gurley as the starting point. You can see I got the half, the number of the yeah. sound. Next, I'm going to fill out the pre the, the remainder of the pre-populated config. So I'm going to take the hash that I just generated. I'm going to paste that in where it says L1 starting block tag. That's where the network is going to start. And I'm going to take my uh, timestamp and I'm going to insert that as the starting timestamp up here. Then and the rest of this is just filling out some addresses. So I'm going to copy paste my other terminal where I generated those addresses. And I'm basically just, where was that admin and filling me my admin? That is not where it's supposed to say admin. I need mean, to make it stay sensitive. There we go. So wherever it's an admin, filling the admin paragraphs. Yeah, I did that, right? Yes. And on, uh, wherever it says proposer, oops, I'm going to fill in my proposer address. That's the second one. Where it says Batcher, I'm going to insert my nest on the Batcher address. I don't even need to find or place only one. And wherever it says Sequencer, I'm going to insert my Sequencer address. Boom. That was really easy. And that's the whole thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy the L1 smart contract. So I've just configured the network. I need to deploy the L1 smart contracts. So the very next thing to do is to go into contract bedrock and create a .env file. So there's this example .env file. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it. And in that, you're just .env. And I'm going to still put in my L1 RPC, which I'm just getting from Alchemy. And I'm going to fill in my deployer private key. I'm going to hide the deployer private key part so you don't steal all my Hiromi ETH now that Hiromi ETH is so, so expensive. Um, and I'm also going to get rid of this tender and stuff. So you only really need those two first phase. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send some Hiromi ETH over to my key or to my deployer address so that I can actually paid for this 
if it ever decides to load, and this is going to be the death of it's going to be the part where I can't send it early. Come on, frame. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to send my girly ETH. I'm going to send my soul. Why not? 20, 20 full girly ETH. What's that? Like $3,000 now? Who knows? All right. Sending that. Boom. Okay. So my account should now have 20 girly ETH. That's great. Oh, did I just send, I just sent the ETH to myself. Oh no. Okay, now I need to send it again. I just sent myself 20 girly. That doesn't make any sense. Come on. Now I'm sweating. It might be because my heater is on too high, but I'm sweating. Oh boy. Oh no. Okay. I got 20 minutes left. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Well, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to start deploying this bar contract. So we are going to, all you need to do is end the expert pad, deploy network, getting started. So now my couch is out of up ETH in it, and I'm just going to start deploying. So this is the slow part of the whole process. The basically just deploying these contracts takes a while. I'm the girly, girly. No, it's usually fine, but it's uh, it's not the fastest network to deploy to. It looks like... All right, it looks like we're going. I'm going to keep an eye on my really deep account to make sure that I'm not running out of money because you never know when your account is going to run out of money. But it looks like it's going. So this is just going to go and deploy a whole bunch of smart contracts that make up the L1 on the side of the system. Uh, those smart contracts are things like the bridge smart contracts, uh, the uh, contracts that configure the network. So there's something called the system config contract um, that is sort of a, a way to manage the L2 system on L1. So if you make a change to that contract on L1, the, the system will actually upgrade sort of automatically or it'll detect the change and change automatically. And a couple of things. There's, there's a core bridge contract, but user land bridge contracts. And then there's the ERC-20 and uh, ERC-721 bridge contracts, which sit on top of all of that. And so a lot of these things sit behind proxies so that they can be upgraded. And so as a result, you can see that we're, we're deploying a whole bunch of proxies first. Then we're going to go ahead and deploy a whole bunch of uh, implementations and then we use this cool contract called the system dictator, which handles upgrading all of the smart contracts at the same time and initializing the system in a series of steps. So yeah, so at this point, all we need to do is wait. It's pretty, uh, pretty tame. Luckily, it looks like girly eat is cheap right now or girly gas is cheap right now. So I'm not burning for eat, but I can show you what we're about to do next. So once all these smart contracts deployed, I mean, at this point, it's going to look at, at identical to the system will, that, that runs Optimus if it runs base. So everyone gets the same smart contracts. There's some legacy stuff in there as well. Uh, but the point is that by making the system uniform, everybody gets the same box to play with. So, okay, what's next? Well, like I said, we need to generate, or so we, we need to run these two components the OP node and the uh, OP, and OP get. So the first thing that's necessary is to run a whole bunch of, or not a whole bunch of things, just a couple of scripts here to generate some config files. And those config files are based on the deployments that we generate. So we're going to need to wait before we can do that. Once we generate the config files, we also need to generate a JSON web token that it is used to interact between the OP GEF and the OP node. This is the exact same system that's used uh, for the consensus client and execution client. Then we're going to take some of those config files. We're going to copy them over to OP GEF, where we're going to create a data directory and we're going to uh, load the sequencer key. And we're going to run it, import the sequencer key and initialize GEF. Uh, like I said, we're going to run a we're going to try to run a full roll up here. So we need, we need a sequencer 
So that's why we generated that sequencer P2P key earlier. Uh, but essentially, you only need one sequencer node for network. So we're just going to run one. Uh, I'm not going to have time to run a second node, but you could also just run a second node and connect to the sequencer over the peer to peer network and receive blocks right away. So we're almost ready in here. Still deploying a bunch of contracts. This is the unfortunate thing about the way that we do our deployments right now is it takes quite a bit of time to deploy everything, but what can you do? It's just how it goes. But luckily this time we are not running it. Cool. In the meantime, I'll talk about what you can do with all this. So right now we're going to be running a standard rollup, right? We're going to be running a, uh, a thing that looks exactly like Optima domain net and it's got you know, all these default configurations. But you can tweak the configuration quite a bit. So if you take a look at the get it started, uh, we can tweak things like block time, right? So if you wanted one second blocks on L on, on your rollup, or if you wanted 10 second blocks on your rollup, you can tweak that there. And there's also stuff like the finalization period, just been safe to the example, we'll set this to 12 seconds, uh, which is one L1 block. But if we can set that to pretty much any number, then there's things like the block gas limit that you can modify and uh, and stuff, just these parameters for essentially how much time a sequencer has in order to get beta onto L1. Almost done here. So the other thing that we can talk about later a little bit if we have time is that you can also modify the the node software itself to do some really cool things. So inside of this example, or inside of the, of the docs, if you head over to the OP stack packs, uh, sample hacks so the adding attributes to the derivation function, adding the creek compile, you can actually see example hacks of how to modify the OP node or the L2 to, or like the, the OP get node to do to fame was like the, the example that we give for modifying the code is automatically tracking the L1 burn, the gas burn on L2. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can just track all sorts of things about different smart contracts that can pull data. You can put things into L2 whenever there's a spe specific L uh, event on L1, and you can do all sorts of things. And then, of course, it's like add a pre compile to get it, which lets you you know, take expensive common computations and make them cheaper. So now we're near the end of the deployment process. Uh, you can see here that we have basically transferred control over to the migration system the big data pair. And it's essentially just executing a series of steps, comparing the system, getting everything ready to deploy my real network, and then we're going to be able to run our watching and so hopefully nobody has broken anything on develop and this deployment is going to work with no problems otherwise i would be shading but i guess we'll find out okay come on finalizing deployment uh oh my jewelry whale account is visible is my jewelry whale account visible now uh oh how do i make it hide I just want to go away so I can see the screen. All right, frame, what are you doing? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. I did. Oh my gosh. My screen is frozen. I didn't expect that the death of me would be that my computer would crash. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Uh, this is bad. Okay. Um, hello. I think Frame did this to me. No, I think his name did it to me. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> no. Not like this. Not like this. Well, oh my God.
Oh, not like this. Please, please, just start working. Well, that's that awkward. All right, all right. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to restart my computer. Wait. Oh, my God. I'm back. Everything is flashing. It's frame. I'm blaming frame. Quit. Please. No. No. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, I can't. This is terrible. I need to, I need to find, but I need to get a terminal. Come on. Let me have a terminal. Okay, wait, what's, I, I need someone in the chat. My, my screen is just frozen. Can anyone hear me? Am I just talking to myself? I'm very confused. Um, I think my wallet software just broke. Oh, God. Hey, Kelvin. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Oh, man. I'm just trying to open up one terminal so I can fill the my wallet. I uh, dropped away. And then you said, okay, what's the command to open up a terminal? I need someone in the chat to tell me the command to open up a terminal without without any control over the rest of my screen. Say, can anybody help him? <laughs> there is a command to this that I never remember. Take screenshot or whatever. I don't know. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Run the sequencer in two minutes. Okay, so I gotta go to the whole keynote. Okay, we're in the whole keynote. We have to make the Genesis con play. Come on, make the Genesis con big. I'm just gonna paste the new years to make it uh, where is my key? All right, we're almost there. Okay. We're going to do this. Oops. No, come on. Go, oh, generate with a thing. Oh, I didn't need to put this in quotes, I guess. Oh, boy. This is not going very well. I'm going to shave my head. Okay. Yeah. What is this? What's going on? I don't understand. This should work. This is bad. I don't know why it's not working. Now I blame whoever wrote this photo. Not what is happening. <laughs> Oh, it's Brian is in here and it's using the config LOL that explains it. Okay. Come on. Come on. Generate the JWT token. Out on the progenesis file. Out the JWT token. There's no cost. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add a referee. Not a ton of Judas to me now. All right. Put a password in the data directory. Put a private key in the data directory. Where is my other image? And. All right. Put a private key in the data directory. Import it. Come on, import the key. Initialize yourself properly. All right, it's initialized. Uh, run get. Run get. Come on. Come on. Come on. Run properly. It's running. Okay, Gap is running. Gap is running. We're almost done. 
we're so close. Um, now I just gotta run the OP now. That's it. That's it. Top of this thing in. Get the sequencer key in here. And the L1 RPC. And L1 RPC, and it's an alchemy key. And, and come on, it's running. It's running. Okay, we're not going to get it. It's running. Okay, so essentially all that's happening here is that it's, it's catching up to, to Gurnley, to the L1, uh, to Gurnley.epascan.io, and uh, it is a couple hundred blocks behind, so it'll take a minute to catch up. But essentially, this is just running the sequencer now. So the sequencer is running, and the only thing left is to start posting transaction data to L1, uh, which we could do, but I don't know if we have much time to do that. And uh, I mean, it might not. We can give it a shot on Keras. So we're going to scan it. Why not? Why not? Why not just do this? Run this, and... Uh, you know what? For the sake of time, and it's the sand key, it's the sequencer key. I don't know if that's going to break anything, but to be honest, I don't have time to do anything else. Put it in that. Run the badger. Get the private key to the sequencer. Put that in there. And then add, 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 and start running the badger. Okay. So we started running the badger. And essentially, now we go over to early. Uh, we should start to see as soon as the batcher decides to start producing blocks, which is going to happen in a second because we're almost at the tip of the chain. So you can see the tip of the chain is at block, early block 435. This is at 425. So in just a second, the sequencer is going to start producing blocks. And then we're going to start sending those blocks off to L1. So throw on the sequencer started producing blocks because it got to the tip. It's right now it's filling in the blocks with empty, empty blocks because we didn't produce any transactions. So it's going to start doing that. And then after it's done, it's going to start producing one block every two seconds, like clock quarter. You can see here, the batcher is starting to add those L2 blocks to its local state. But on the batcher is starting to submit transactions. And so if we head over to the batch address, which is FF42069, you can see that three seconds ago, the batch submitter started submitting addresses, and we now have a fully functional roll-up. Uh, I don't know how much time that took in total. I hope we blessed the very this bottle. Otherwise, that should my head. But even, even in a chaotic situation, see that? OP stack is so good that even, even under Crefter, the chaotic situation, you could restart a computer half cup wait and still able to do it in 30 minutes. So there you have it. That's a roll up. I can expose this thing to the internet um, and people can start transacting on it, but I probably won't do that yet. But if, you know, I don't know, if you're interested in doing that, let me know or I can send you some tests in it. But this is a fully functional roll up. We have this node and I can start sending transactions to it and I'll start doing stuff. So, um, yeah, so there we are. That's, that's basically it. That's the whole thing. Hopefully now it's 30 minutes. I don't know. Who knows? All right. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Who knows? We, uh, um, we did it. We had a question though. Um, okay. That does. Uh, does this process work on Sepolia Network as well? What changes need to be done if so? Um, this process does work on every single network. The only thing that you, you will need to change is in the config, just what the L1 chain ID is. And you'll also need to uh, in the Hat config, specify a network for Sepolia because it's not in here yet, actually. Yeah, so you'll see that there's this getting started network. So you'll just have to edit the chain ID to be the supply on the chain ID. But otherwise, it will work exactly the same. And you could do this on any network. You can even run it on another rollup if you wanted to and do an L3. Okay. Cool. That was the only question. Um, yeah, I uh, 
I don't know. I think, well, since you said you don't have a razor, I think you should, you need, you need to shave it the next, <laughs> next reason uh, that you do. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. We kind of <laughs> made it. I'll blame, I blame Fran uh, <laughs> for all my problems. I'll have to shave the frame logo into my head. Uh, <laughs> Austria. Cheers. Follow the tutorial and you'll, you'll get far and, and DM me if you need help. Cheers. Thank you, Kelvin. And thanks everybody for attending. Uh, I posted the discord link to the optimism, uh, channel as well in the chat. If you have any other questions, um, but yeah, this was, this was fun, Kelvin. De definitely appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thanks for everybody for sticking in there. I could appreciate it. Cheers. Have a good one. See ya.